Time for another limited budget cooking challenge. This one's going to be a bit different from the others because there is no limited budget. What? This video is really a spin-off from the questions and discussion that came out at the end of the first inflation-adjusted video recently. These are going to be the rules and parameters for this exercise. As usual, the objective will be to make three different meals – breakfast, lunch and dinner. But instead of a fixed, limited budget, there's just going to be the directive – try to be frugal. So instead of trying to wring out meals from a very small amount of money, this is more of a discovery mission to look at the sorts of things that are cheap within their categories, buy a few of them, and see what sorts of meals I can put together. And assuming I succeed at all, to see what frugal looks like in terms of total price. Frugal in this context will also mean not buying something that's too big for the scope of a one-day exercise. The usual stuff will be permitted – water, salt, pepper, kitchen facilities and the power or fuel needed to run them, transport, the principle of cause and effect, and so on. No foraging or scavenging condiments for this one. No other cupboard ingredients, spices or sauces. So apart from that salt and pepper, all of the flavour has to come from things I buy. Because this is a sort of price discovery mission, no reduced items. Well, I suppose I can buy them if I see them, but we'll price them at their full price for the sum up here. Oh, and just for fun, to push me out of a rut I might be getting into, I will not be allowed to buy carrots, bananas, baked beans or sardines. So those are the rules, and remember this isn't ever about realism. It's about creating a set of conditions in which something interesting might arise, or in which I might learn something or just fail miserably. What will it be today? Let's go shopping. Thinking about breakfast, there are these little pots of instant porridge, but that's hardly very creative and you don't get a lot in them. Buying a bag of oats would fail on the frugal angle because there's much more in there than I need for today. Also, those oats have nearly doubled in price in the last year or so. It's possible to make porridge from oaty biscuits, but I think I might be better looking for a different kind of breakfast. Just looking around generally for various things that might be usable in more than one meal. Ten fish fingers for 75 pence, but really nothing else in the frozen fish section. In the frozen meat and pies section, not much to work with. There's this pack of four cheese and bean pastries for one pound. Pretty good, but baked beans are banned as an ingredient. And I'm not actually sure how I would integrate these things into three different meals. Flour, as a basic staple, is 58 pence for a 1.5 kilo bag, which is great, but again way more than I need in one day. Smaller packs of flour, or mixes containing flour, are all more expensive. This pack of savoury rice mix is 28 pence, and has the benefit of seasonings being included in the mix, so that seems like something that could be useful. Eggs? Well, there's a bit of a supply issue with those at the moment, and the smallest quantity you can ever buy here is six. I don't really want to do another challenge day where I eat six eggs. Here's something interesting in the fresh fish section. Kippers priced by pack weight, so a rummage through here for the smallest pack yields this for £1.32. That is a lot to spend all at once on one of these challenges, but these have a lot of flavour and contain good protein and fats. I'm going to splash out and get them. Loose baking potatoes. I keep passing these over as in some supermarkets it's a very expensive way to buy potatoes, but let's see how much this potato will actually cost. 18 pence. OK, let's get that. Actually, let's go back for a second potato and one onion. Onion at 9 pence, and so as not to get stung by possible penny rounding errors, I'll reweigh both potatoes together. 36 pence. I need a few more things for flavour and variety. The tomato section is very sad. Let's see what these two weedy little salad tomatoes are going to cost. 20 pence. This might be a regrettable purchase, as for only 8 pence more I could get a whole can of plum tomatoes, but for some reason I went ahead and got these. I still need more protein and energy in this basket. Hummus is a possibility, or red kidney beans for 33 pence, but I went for chickpeas at 49 pence, somewhat taking advantage of budgetary leniency. I feel like I almost have enough here, but it would be good if I could get something kind of creamy to use as a sauce. There are tubs of cream cheese for 85 pence, not much else in the cheese aisle though although maybe these blocks of not feta, or this tub of natural yoghurt for 45 pence. Not a bad price, but I fear this stuff will be pretty sour and watery. I could get a can of cheap chicken soup for 57 pence. 
or this four pack of instant chicken and vegetable cup soups for 39 pence. Let's see what I can do with those. Still need to be thinking about overall flavors, so back to the vegetable aisle. Maybe I could swap my onion for a leek and thus I have something green, but the price per unit weight is more than twice that of onions, so that seems like it would be an instant fail. Broccoli is sold by weight, and I spotted a tiny snapped off floret in the bottom of the tray. I didn't buy it, and now as I'm narrating this, I really wish I had. Instead, I got a green pepper. Okay, I think that will have to do. Let's go and see what this basket is gonna cost. Three pounds 68, hmm. Okay, shopping is done. Here's the haul. A tin of chickpeas, 49 pence. Two baking potatoes, 36 pence. A pack of kippers, one pound 32. Now this is probably the most indulgent or extravagant item in the shopping basket. Normally this would have been a tin of sardines or maybe at a push, a tin of tuna. This is kippers. It's quite a generous size pack though. So there's quite a lot of fish in there. One pound 32. Wouldn't even dream of trying to buy items like that on one of the regular budget challenges because, well, £1.32, obviously, even on the recent challenges I've done with the increased budget, there's then five pence left in the budget after buying that. A pack of golden vegetable savoury rice, 28 pence. A pack of four sachets of chicken and vegetable soup in a mug. This costs 39 pence. This is a bit of a weird one. I don't know, this might be a bad purchase, but we'll see. One green pepper. I wanted to buy carrots, but carrots are banned. So one green pepper, 55 pence. And the peppers were priced in eaches, so there was no point buying the smallest one. I just rummaged through the box and found the biggest one I could find. One onion, or one onion, nine pence. And two sad little salad tomatoes, or tomatoes, 20 pence. Again, this could be a bad purchase here. A can of tomatoes, I think, came in at something like 30-something pence. I probably should have bought a can of tomatoes and maybe not the green pepper or maybe not the soup. Don't know. Anyway, that is the entirety of the haul, and that came to £3.68. The kippers are the thing that have really skewed the price upwards. Anyway, tomorrow I've got to try and make three meals with that. Right, this is what I've got, but before breakfast, I'm just going to do a little bit of prep that's going to make things easier later in the day. I'm going to put these potatoes in the oven to bake. I might as well bake the onion with them and I think I will probably bake the pepper because it just needs to be cooked. So we might as well do a little batch of cooking right there. So potatoes, I'm just giving them a little wash. Same with the pepper. And the onion can just go straight in there like that. Potatoes, I will give a little sprinkle of coarse salt. Roll them around in it because that will help to make the skins more usable. So that lot goes in the oven now. And while I've got the oven running, I'm going to toast some of these chickpeas. Not very sure that I'm going to use it, but we'll drain off the liquid there, the aquafaba. People do keep telling me you can use that as an egg substitute. You can in certain circumstances. I don't think you could fry that like an egg. Well, that's a nicely filled can of chickpeas. So I think about half of those, together with one of these sachets of soup. So this is supposedly chicken and vegetable soup. Ingredients are maize starch, maltodextrin, dried glucose syrup, potato starch, flavorings, contains barley, palm oil, salt, onion powder, dried peas, dried carrot, sugar, milk proteins. Now there is chicken powder in there somewhere, quite low down on the ingredients. Anyway, some of that soup powder, and I'll use that for seasoning these chickpeas. So those can go spread out in a different tray. That'll go on a different shelf in the oven and we'll just cook those until they're toasted. Those won't be in as long as the potatoes. Savory rice can be done in the microwave, but I think I'm gonna do it in a pan here on the hob. 425 ml of water. And actually I think here, I'm gonna use this chickpea water and I'll top that up with cold. So that's a total of 425 ml of liquid. This is just rice with some dried vegetables and seasoning mixed in. Okay, and we've just got to bring that to the boil and simmer and it will just absorb all that liquid. These kippers, the instructions on them are to boil or microwave them in the bag. I'm not doing that. There's an indentation there, the shape of the butter pat. I'm going to save that butter pat for finishing. These should be sufficiently oily that they will not stick to the pan. And then one of my little tomatoes.
rice is boiling, so I'm just going to turn that down to a kind of gentle simmer. And the extractor fan's got to go on now, so that's what the noise is. Nice, that skin's going a little bit crispy. And I think now, the butter can go in. All that's cooked now, so I'm just going to take that off the heat and let that rest a little bit. Now while we're just waiting for that rice to finish, I'm just going to put one of the fish fillets in here. Actually, I'm going to put them both in here for now. That one I'm having for breakfast, the top one. These tomatoes, I'll put them out onto the plate. And then in the pan here, we've got a combination of that butter and some oil that's come out of the fish, some fat that's come out of the fish. I'm not wasting that. Fat is always a problem on these low price challenges. So I'm definitely not wasting that. I put it in there with the fish, but I'm going to use it later. Okay, I think that rice is done. I'm going to turn it off and just let that stand for a minute. And it'll just absorb that last little bit of liquid in there. Right, time to plate up. So there's the rice. I'm just going to taste a little bit for seasoning. There is often quite a lot of salt in these sachets. Yeah, it doesn't need any extra seasoning. I'm going to reserve a portion of the rice. I've got some ideas on what to do with that later. And then the rest of the rice. Now, smoked fish and golden yellow rice, very nearly kedgeri. If we had some curry powder and boiled eggs on that, together with the kippers, we wouldn't be very far away from kedgeri. Okay, well that's breakfast, and I would say, for one of these challenges, that actually looks pretty appetizing. Perhaps just because it's not bananas on toast. All right. We'll have just a little bit of black pepper on that. Kippers are a funny thing, because they've got lots and lots of tiny, tiny little bones in there, which you'd never pick them all out. You just have to kind of accept that that's the nature of kippers and uh, just chew them up. Mm, that's really nice. I, mean, I can't take the credit for any of the seasonings in this rice. There's no real cooking here, it's just preparing. A bit of tomato together with it. That actually works. That's not a bad breakfast for one of these challenges. And of course, we did spend more than twice as much as the last challenge, so maybe that's why. So yeah, happy with that as a breakfast. That's really tasty. So yeah, not at all a bad breakfast. That was actually really nice. Now this rice is gonna go in the fridge. I think we're gonna use that for lunch. This remaining kipper and some buttery fat is also going to go in the fridge. That's going to be part of dinner. I did, by the way, do the nutritional analysis for the entire day. Here it is. I'm not going to break that down by meals because it's just a faff. It kind of only makes sense to do that as the whole day anyway. We are probably in terms of official RDAs, a little bit light on calories, a kind of borderline on protein, but I could have spent more money and got more of those things. Meanwhile, the baked potatoes aren't done, but these toasted chickpeas are. Well, I say they are. They're about as toasted as I dare take them. That one's probably a bit over. Mm. I'm going to save these because I think they're going to go on top of dinner. And I might just put some water in this pan and reserve that in case we need that for stock or something. I think once that's cooled, I'll just be able to take that skin off of there. Yeah, that definitely feels like it's cooked. And then potatoes can go back in for another 20 minutes at least. This stuff, which is the deglaze from the pan I toasted the chickpeas in, well, it tastes interesting. It tastes, like, it tastes a bit like peanuts or something. So I think that's interesting enough to warrant keeping it in case I need to add some flavor in liquid form to something later on. After additional 20 minutes in the oven, the baked potatoes are cooked and you can tell that they're done because they're, well, they move a little bit. And if I poke in there with a knife, I can feel that the inside is soft. I'm gonna leave that to cool a bit before we do the next part. A little bit of prep for both lunch and dinner. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make up some of this soup. It's probably gonna be about a cup and a half of it here. because I've got that half cup left from earlier. And I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker than the directions actually specify. Right, okay, we'll go for about like that much to start with. Because I want this to be a lot thicker than you'd normally have it if you're having it as a cup of soup. We're going to use this as a sauce. 
I think that's about right. I'm going to leave that aside to cool down a little bit because I don't need it hot. Next, these baked potatoes. So I'm going to carefully scoop out, leaving a little bit around the edge. I'm going to scoop out the potato from inside here, like that, and set that aside. Just using an ice cream scoop. Could do it with a spoon. Those are going to go back into this tray just for the moment. Now, this green pepper. Really, really interesting the way the skin has just blistered away from the flesh. Green pepper is not something I eat a lot of because as a salad vegetable, I always think that, you know, sweeter red peppers and yellow peppers and orange peppers are just nicer. But when it's cooked, it can have quite a bit of depth of flavor. Right, okay, so that's the roasted green pepper. A little bit of that, probably about a quarter of the pepper, I'm going to reserve. The rest of it, I'm going to chop up. Actually, I probably don't need all of that. I'm probably going to need about maybe half of that. And that's going to go together with the rice I've got left over from breakfast. I'll just mix the pepper and the rice together. Now I'll just have the potato skins back. And I'll try and divide that equally into them. We're not finished stuffing these, by the way. There's going to be something else on top. Okay, so that's one layer of stuffing. Next, this onion. And I think we're going to find the same sort of story with this onion as we did with the pepper, that inside it's all juicy and those bits I could use for stock, but probably won't today. I'm going to reserve a little bit more than half the onion. The rest of it I'm just going to chop up here. I'm going to use the same little bowl for mixing this. So that onion goes in there. We'll have some of these chickpeas, about a third of the can there. Yeah, no, a bit more. Most of the chickpeas, just reserve a few now. And I'm just going to crush these a little bit like this on the board. Okay, they're just crushed to the point where they start to get a little bit sticky and they've got some ability to bind. And that's going to go in the dish with the onion. A little bit of ground black pepper. And this mixture is going to go on top there. Okay, getting somewhere. And then I'm gonna have some thin slices of tomato. Let's see if I can just cut four. Four thin slices of tomato. I might be able to save some tomato for later. And I was actually gonna sprinkle some of the soup powder on there, but I think actually what I'll do is I'll just spoon a little bit of this ready, this soup I've mixed up on top there. It's not what I intended to do with it, but I'm just making it up as I go along here. Just spoon a little bit of that on top of there. Just to give that a bit of moisture, there's quite a lot of liquid in the peppers underneath the peppers and onions. So I'm not too worried about it drying out. That's going to go in the oven now, just ready to warm through and crisp up the top a little bit. Probably no more than about 10, 15 minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to prepare dinner. This kipper left over from breakfast. The skin, quite edible. I'm not really going to worry too much about peeling the skin off. You could if you don't like it, but that would just be wasting food today. And there is actually quite a lot of goodness in the skin. Breaking that up, not into tiny pieces, just into chunks. This is actually a microwave safe dish because I probably warm this up in the microwave. The remaining onion, I'll just save a tiny bit. I'm just going to save a tiny bit because I've got an idea. So a little bit of onion saved. The rest of it's going to go in chunks. I'm not going to cut this up too small. That's going to go on top of the fish in there. The remaining chickpeas. This sauce, well, this soup, which I'm going to use as a sauce. Okay, and I think I'm going to put the potato on top of that, but I think I'm going to let that cool and set a little bit first. Now, for later on, we're going to have 
this green pepper. I'm reserving a little bit of it because I've got another idea. I might actually incorporate a starter into lunch or dinner. So a bit of green pepper, just a tiny bit of that onion. The rest of the tomato, I'm not going to bother peeling this. Just cut it small and the skin won't be a problem. Some of these toasted chickpeas. A little bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper. That's going to go in the fridge. And that's my kind of side to go with at dinner tonight. Now this kind of fish pie base is cooled a little bit. I'm going to try and put the potato on top. Now there's not a lot of potato to top this. So I'm going to kind of slice it and drop it on in pieces to try to just distribute it fairly and evenly. That is a thin layer of potato. Normally, if this was a fish pie, that would have probably three times that thickness for this size of a pie. But anyway, there's a layer of potato on top there. That butter and fish oil that's in the bottom of this container, remember I said I'm not gonna waste that. That's just gonna go briefly in the microwave. Right, that was just five seconds in the microwave. And I'm just gonna brush it on top of this potato here. I might actually put this, I might, when I cook this, I might put it under the grill first just to brown these potatoes and then heat it through in the microwave. It could just go in the oven, but it seems a bit of a waste putting the oven on for this tiny little dish. Anyway, that's made good use of that. So that's just gonna go in the fridge until dinner time. That's the potatoes. I did just put them under the grill for a moment. I don't think they're gonna go any more crispy than that without burning, so I've stopped there. These are gonna to be too hot to eat right now, so I'm just gonna set them aside for a moment while I just fix something else. If you can hear something that sounds like a jet engine in the background, by the way, it's the washing machine spinning. Now, remember that deglaze liquid we got off the toasted chickpea pan. When, when I toasted these chickpeas, there was a, this is the deglaze liquor from that pan. I'm gonna make a little cup of soup to go with this, these potatoes, but we're gonna just kind of try and elevate it a little bit. So I need about 200 ml of liquid. So the rest is gonna be water and into that, I'm going to put just my last little bit of onion and green pepper. That's all finished with now. Bit of chickpea there, we might as well have that. Right, that's going to go in the microwave until it's nearly boiling. All right, so there it is. And then one of these sachets, so we've only got one sachet left after this. This is the second to last sachet of instant soup mix. So just kind of added a few things in there to make it a bit more than what it was and that can go in there. Topped with toasted chickpeas. There we go. Right. Let's plate up the rest of the meal. So there it is, that's lunch. Let's get that to the table and give it a taste. I'm sad the camera wasn't rolling for my first taste. I'm glad I layered those things in there rather than just mixing up the chickpeas and onions and pepper and rice and piling it all in together. I was gonna do that, but I'm glad I mixed the rice and peppers and I think, was it rice and peppers, chickpeas and onions separately and then layered them. That actually introduces just a little bit of nice contrast they're a bit messy to eat but actually really satisfying and this soup well even with the pepper and onion and chickpea deglaze liquor in there it's still a bit uninteresting but with the toasted chickpeas it's good the toasted chickpeas are a good touch stuffed potatoes i would do this again but maybe just with a couple of extra things it really does need some cheese on top and it'd be nice with a bit of bacon or ham or even tuna or something mixed in as well. That was actually quite a satisfying and filling lunch.
Okay, dinner time, and all I really need to do is cook this. I'm going to put it under the grill first to brown the potatoes, and then I think I'm going to warm it through in the microwave. Reason for doing it that way, I don't want the sauce to bubble up over the potatoes before we do the browning, or else it'll just burn. So, grill first. Okay, so that's the top just a little bit toasted. I could have just done this all in the oven, of course, but it's a tiny little dish and spinning up the oven just seems a bit wasteful. So the grill is just gonna to toast the top in a short time. The microwave is going to warm the rest of it in an equally short time. And I will just probe into the middle of the thing here just to make sure that it's sufficiently hot throughout. Well, 52. Might put it back in for another couple of seconds. All right, well, there it is. The handles have more or less cooled down sufficiently to touch now. Let's see what this is like. So, steaming hot fish pie with chickpeas in it. Oh, and look, something else with chickpeas in it. Yeah, that's the problem with a lot of the whole thing of this challenge is limited scope for variety. Just had to go and refill the pepper mill. So a little bit of black pepper on there. Right, let's give this a taste. So this is, the sauce for this is made from one of those soups and this is kippers and mashed potato and chickpeas. Hmm. Surprisingly authentic tasting fish pie. I mean, a fish pie is something we cook quite a lot, but we normally use haddock and make a bechamel sauce or a cheese sauce and have mashed potato on top. I don't normally do the whole cup of soup thing. One thing, this is rather salty, even though I've not added any salt here because that soup is salty. And of course the kippers are quite salty. What's this weird little sound like? Hmm, that could do with a bit of vinaigrette or something on it. And together, those two things, well, they, they don't not go together. I think probably a green salad would have been a better complement for this. I don't think the artificial lighting in this room is probably doing it any favours. Dining room light here tends to make everything look a little bit colourless. Cooking the kippers in the sauce there has made those funny little bones stick out a bit. But they're not very troublesome. The pie itself is actually quite hearty. I think I would have preferred a milder, less salty sauce on there. And I think having whole chickpeas in here and then whole toasted chickpeas in that salad thing is a bit of a gaff. In terms of the size of the meal, I actually think that's quite a generous portion. It didn't look like very much in that dish, but if I had dished that out all at once, it would be quite a heap on this plate. Okay, I think it's time to go back to Studio Shrimp now for a bit of analysis and reflection. Bit of fishy. Come over here. Come over here. Sit down. Oh, a penguin. They're nice. There's kippers. Bit salty for you. Okay, well, I think first of all, I'll rate the meals. Breakfast, not quite kedgery, was, I think, the best looking and most enjoyable meal of the day. If I felt I could take the credit for that, I'd have rated this 8 out of 10. But because there's actually very little culinary art here, I just cooked a pre-packed rice thing and some kippers, only 6 out of 10 on that account. Lunch, stuffed potatoes and soup. The potatoes were pretty good considering the limited scope of the ingredients. The soup was neither amazing nor terrible. Another 6 out of 10. Needs cheese. Dinner, fish pie and chickpea salad. The salad didn't really contribute much, but the pie was a lot better than I expected, although a little bit salty. 7 out of 10. At the end of the day, all I had left is one sachet of that instant soup, plus the onions and pepper trimmings, but those went in the compost. I do feel reasonably well fed at the end of all this, although without even doing the calculations, I think I've consumed too much salt. The soup, the rice, the kippers were all quite salty, and I did add salt to the potato skins and the chickpea salad. So, sipping a pint of water now as I write this script. But what, if anything, has this variation on the challenge taught me? Well, a few things. Firstly, even on a one-day exercise like this, doing the cooking in a concentrated batch required a lot less effort than I usually have to put in. Nextly, 
If we were to plot difficulty, which would be some function of cost and effort, versus output quality, which would be some function of enjoyment and nutrition, say, I reckon we'd get a sigmoid curve. Now I know I usually labour the point about these videos not being anything about real life, but I think there might be a real life application to this point and it's not a very happy one. Basically, if you start at the bottom point of this curve, increasing the effort and or cost, that is, you try a bit harder or you spend a bit more, doesn't actually yield a great benefit in output quality. Furthermore, wandering around the supermarket just looking for the cheapest one of everything has sort of made me realise there's a fairly small range of things that are quite cheap, and then there is a significant price hike between those things and everything else. For example, in the cereal aisle, there's that box of wheat biscuits, own brand Weetabix, for 77 pence. Decent value, I suppose, but everything else on the shelf is a lot more. Or in the dairy chiller, there's that one line of natural yoghurt for 45 pence, and everything else in the section is a lot more. This pattern repeats throughout the whole of the supermarket experience, and as I've said before, it's probably the reason why I so often gravitate towards carrots and baked beans in these videos. They're the cheap things. And I think the fact that I do scour the whole shop for those cheap things might be part of the reason why so many people tell me that our food is cheap. I mean, it might be cheap in general, although other necessities in life such as fuel are probably more expensive for us, but my final point is this sort of penny-pinching shopping is difficult, and if you were to try to live the way you see me behave in this series, the cost-based selection would give you a rather unvaried diet, which is not a good thing from either a physical or mental well-being angle. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Next in this series is going to have to be a longer experiment with an appropriate budget, I think, exploring perhaps some of the possibilities of buying and cooking in greater bulk. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.